Meanwhile, we are learning more about suspect Brian Koberger's connection with the four victims. People magazine reporting that Koberger had pictures of one of the young women downloaded on his phone, but did not reveal which one. Joining us now is former CIA and FBI special agent Tracy Walder. Tracy, thank you so much for being here. Thank you for having me, Natasha. Tracy, as an investigator, how significant is that detail of Koberger having photos of one of the victims in particular? So if that is the case, it would be highly significant. I would have imagined that one of the first pieces of evidence once he was taken into custody that was seized and ultimately gone through for digital forensics would have been his cell phone. I mean, it would have been a treasure trove, even more so, quite frankly, than a laptop, a computer or a hard drive, since, you know, young folks are really connected to them in every way, shape and form. And so I think it's significant in that it sort of shows this pattern of behavior. I mean, we know that he was reprimanded um, at WSU for his treatment of some of the female students and female staff. Um, and so if he had photos on his cell phone, it directly ties him back um, now to the occupants of that house, which, you know, we had sort of that cell phone ping, cell phone evidence, but this is kind of one step closer to tying him to that. And that article did not detail what kind of pictures they were, if they were just taken from social media or actually taken by Koberger himself. Would that make a difference in the investigation? So... Yes, right, because you have kind of two different schools of thought here. You have digital stalking, right? I'm imagining, although I, I don't want to say for certain, that the vast majority of the platforms that the four victims used were probably set to public and not private. And so if Koberger had come into kind of that casual contact that I think he did uh, with one of the victims, he could have easily found their Instagram page and then, you know, maybe saved screenshots of some of those pictures. If he was taking sort of action shots of them, stalking them, following them, following to their work, school, all of that, that really sort of sort of goes more towards this, this premeditation. Okay, and let's talk about the site of the murders being demolished. What is your reaction to that news? And is there any indication that it should be preserved as long as a trial is active? So in my opinion, I don't think they need to preserve it, quite frankly. I think they've done a lot of 3D modeling already of the home that they can use for jurors. I mean, they have that down to this, a centimeter recreation um, of the home. And so that's admissible to be used in court. Also, we know that the defense, the defense attorney, have taken a walk through the home multiple times. So I don't think the house needs to be there anymore. And I think demolishing them, demolishing the house, is actually the best way to preserve the positive memories of the victims and what they contribute to society and to the University of Idaho rather than sort of always remembering their place of death. I appreciate that. And meanwhile, some of Koberger's previous friends have spoken to the Idaho statesman saying that the accused Idaho murderer was a, quote, alpha bully and, quote, always wanted to be dominant. Would any of these sort of statements that are coming out now be helpful or be usable in court in an effort to describe his sort of personality? So I think to your point, I think they exactly describe would go towards describing his his personality. It would be interesting to know, um, you know, in what context they observe that sort of dominant or aggressive behavior. I'd heard that as well. Sometimes I heard it in regards to how he presented in academia um, or is that how he presented to to women um, or to, to friends. And so I think that would be an important distinction to make. Um, but I do think it could be it could really be speaking to his state of mind um, and to how he may have viewed sort of this casual encounter with one of the victims and sort of blew that up into something larger and they became a target. All right, Tracy Walder, thank you so much for your time. Always appreciate it. Thank you for watching. Go to newsnationnow.com to find News Nation on your television provider. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button below to get more of News Nation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.